I just spoke in the stem cells and development um, session, and in that session we're examining the role of um, multiple ways that stem cells have to potentially drive cancer and to evade or escape current therapies. So stem cells have mechanisms by virtue of their um, ability to self-renew or regenerate themselves. Um, they have the ability to try to evade and escape common therapies that are delivered for cancers. So I study uh, childhood brain cancer, um, medulloblastoma, which is the most aggressive and rare, uh, not rare, most aggressive and common um, pediatric brain cancer. And in this cancer, we believe that there are primitive cell populations that may be driving the cancer. And these are tricky cells. They use all kinds of tricks uh, to evade chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Um, these are the standard therapies for this type of childhood cancer, and um, these therapies tend to be very toxic. And so uh, my whole program is looking at trying to develop novel therapies that are more targeted and more specific to avoid this horrible systemic toxicity of chemo and radiotherapy um, that may target the mechanisms by which these stem cells self-renew. My lab uses uh, patient-derived xenograft models, and in fact my institute, the McMaster Stem Cell and Cancer Research Institute, is focused purely on using human stem cell models of disease. And the reason that we like to use human models is because we believe it's one step closer to translating any therapies. As you may know, uh, mouse models are excellent for learning about, um, about mechanisms of disease, and small organisms and animal models that we use are fantastic, but they have their drawbacks. Drawbacks. And the drawbacks are very often discoveries that we make in these model organisms don't translate into, into human beings. And in fact, don't, very often we find those things don't recapitulate in the human system. So when in a patient-derived xenograft model, you're already starting with the material from the patient directly. And simply using the mouse as a carrier or as a host to explore the mechanisms of what that human disease will do um, and so in my particular patient-derived xenograft model, um, we take the same chemotherapy and radiation therapy that we use to treat children with brain cancer, and we've um, tinkered with it, the whole, uh, the whole sort of protocol, in order to deliver it to immunocompromised mice. So we engraft the mice with the human patient-derived tumor, we treat the mouse with the same regimen and protocol of chemo and radiation therapy, and then we're able to read out what happens when the tumor inevitably relapses or recurs. And we're able to read out all the molecular mechanisms on every step of the way, which often isn't possible in human beings because in patients, you're not often able to sample the cancer at all those different time points, but in our model, we can. So I think that's an excellent question to ask um, about how patient-to-patient -patient variability confounds a lot of the findings that we make in basic science research simply because we can't extrapolate one beautiful mechanism we discover to every single patient. And quite simply, there's no, there's no one drug that works for every patient. And so I think that's why developing these model systems that we use in my lab um, is trying to advance towards two goals. Um, one goal is to try to model the dynamic nature of cancer, so cancer is not a static disease, and very often when we simply biopsy a patient's tumor and then study that tiny specimen to the greatest depth possible, it's excellent because it yields information. But the problem is the tumor is evolving and changing in the patient. And so very often whatever we, the, the, the founding basis for our discoveries may not actually predict what's happening in the patient. So one goal of our, our model systems um, is to try to d model the dynamic nature of cancer and to look at something that will be sampled multiply over time. But the second virtue of the, of the system is that we model individual patient tumors almost in a personalized medicine approach. And I think this will be the way of the future, no matter what model or assay you use. It really should be adapted to each patient in order to understand the dynamics of that patient's particular tumor. I think that a very large problem in terms of um, funding for childhood cancer is that uh, childhood cancer is very rare. And this is, this is a boon, of course. We're very glad that so few children get cancer. But it does make something difficult to study. For example, um, companies that make drugs or, or therapies for diabetes 
um, have very large programs that they can disseminate around the world because diabetes is such a common and such a, an invasive problem in our society. And so it's something that can, can be, we, can, we have large resources to, to ramp up for, for that type of problem. But very often I find it's not engaging charities that is the problem, it's engaging pharma or, or industry. Because industry very necessarily being financially driven is interested in large problems that generate large revenues. But rare and small problems, it's often hard to find that niche, to find industry partners who are interested in problems in pediatric cancer. That's been by far the greatest challenge. I think on the other hand, finding public funding or charity funding for brain tumor research has not been difficult because children are very good advocates and, and people are very willing, willing to, to form charities around um, children who are afflicted unfairly with cancer. Um, however, I'd like to be able to capture industry partners more for childhood cancer. The future for my lab program is definitely moving towards translation of basic science discoveries into cures for patients through all the mechanisms that we've discussed, simply finding model organisms and model systems that best capture the dynamic and evolving nature of cancer um, by looking at more of a personalized medicine approach and modeling each patient's tumor in such a way that we can predict in some ways what will happen um, shortly in their, in their future and, and to be able to react quickly such that we can design empirical therapeutic um, regimens that are individualized for each patient and based very rationally on the patient's own tumor's molecular biology.